It's funny, when, we first, uh, uh, when they first asked us to do this talk, the, the thing that they were interested in, they, or they warned us about, they said, don't, don't scare everyone about the end of publishing. And things are, Your thing was pretty are, scary. You think? Yeah, well, yeah, but that's not my fault. That's corporate capitalism end stage. Uh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, you know what, actually, I, I mean, this is, this is, it seems off topic, but maybe it's not. The thing I'm, I'm most interested in, in hearing from you, so you, you've been able, in so many ways, to disinter disintermediate a lot of different institutions and create a kind of peer-to-peer -peer versions of things that used to not be, right? From, from you know, blogger through Twitter, through Medium. Uh, does, is it all still happening on the, the, the landscape, though, of, of venture capital in the end? Is there a way to disintermediate that one? In other words, to say, no, we're not gonna, we don't need in VC, we don't need investors, we don't need to go public, we don't need any of that. We can actually stay on this, do this. Uh, is there a way to disrupt that one? Uh, yeah, people are working at that. Uh. <laughs> I'm, it's not what I'm working on, but, but there are people that do that. I mean, you can, it's way cheaper than ever to, to start something on the internet. It's easier to make money if people like it, although there's more competition. Um, so there's people who are totally not raising money at all. Um, the whole, the, the Jobs Act enabled crowdsource funding, which is starting to become a thing. Uh, Kickstarter and others are, are enabling new forms of funding. And then um, there's a service called AngelList that actually mm -hmm. makes it way more efficient to find uh, funders. Um, but I think all of these things, the same as blogging to journalism, are sort of, what they do is they make the ecosystem more complex. And so the AngelList enables companies, in theory, to get funded much more easily, but that doesn't actually threaten the good VCs, it threatens the poor VCs. Bloggers didn't threaten good journalists, they threaten poor journalists. And so for everyone else, the ecosystem becomes richer. Well, I mean, the blogger threatened good journalists in the sense that it, to the untrained young person's eye, it's very hard for them to distinguish between what they read in an op-ed here, or what they read in a blog. Is it? There. I think it, well, apparently, people under 17, 18 years old are really bad at distinguishing between credible news sources and, and non-credible ones. Mm. And I always get that question when I do talks in colleges. They say, well, why should we pay professional journalists when we're all blogging here for free? Wow, that's scary. It is scary. It is scary. I mean, the obvious the answer I, I, you give is, well, corporations are spending hundreds of millions of dollars creating communications campaigns, you know, so you might as well spend a few hundred dollars on somebody to see whether it's true. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it's hard. It's, again, they don't understand yet, you know, that you have to work a week or two to figure out something rather than go to HuffPo and see whether someone else has, you know, it's tricky. Yeah. Well, one of the things, to just turn back to what I'm working on, is yeah. um, <laughs> I... The thing about blogging that I'm surprised hasn't evolved much is the ability to actually work together to create something better. I mean, that's what, orga that's what media organizations do, but um, that's what all organizations do. And it's actually what the internet does in many cases profoundly with things like Wikipedia or open source software. It's an am amazing tool for bringing people together to each contribute to create something better than any of them could on their own. And we haven't really seen that when it comes to other types of knowledge or stories or um, people have tried it in news. News maybe makes less sense because it's it, at least the ephemeral type of news. But that, uh, this is part of what I mean when I say the internet's capable of, of more. I think we can do better, whether it's, whether it's professionals or you know, people who are paid to do it or not, I think is a separate question. Well, yeah, but it's a big one, right? I mean, and I, I feel like, I don't know, for me, and probably a lot of people, when they look at Medium, they go, okay, this is really cool for the person who's developing their writing talent, or you know, someone in college or grad school is experimenting with fiction, but it's like, if you want to start making money at this, I mm -hmm. mean, are you going to then leave that platform to go into something else? Hopefully you know I mean? not. It's not as yeah. distinct. I mean, yeah. with Blogger, at least, you know, you could put up your Google ads or whatever people do and have their own thing and then become Wonket or something. Yeah. Well, what we're trying to do is create a whole, a whole system uh, which, which blogs didn't do, but a whole system that is more efficient in general, helps people um, get the stuff that's very valuable to them. And part of that system has to be, there has to be an economic system within that system. And um, so we'll, we'll, we're 
going to actively try and figure that out as well, and th that'll be important um, to some people and for some types of content and not important to others. Right, whether it's a jingle thing that you can put on there and people can donate or, you know, that, that ideally it would be a home if, if Andrew Sullivan, instead of saying, I'm going to go do this paywall this way, you would want to create, you would, you would love someday for yes. that platform to be a place yeah. where he could have gone and done if it. If that model, and I'm happy he and others are trying all kinds of stuff, there's, a, there's another company called Matter that is trying to fund mm -hmm. uh, long-form investigative journalism through subscriptions. If that stuff works, that's fantastic. And um, it, we would definitely explore some of those same options, and it will work better at scale than it will individually. I mean, it's funny, for me, when I saw the word medium, I wasn't thinking of it as medium in terms of like medium and the message medium. I was thinking like medium length, medium, medium length. time. That's actually where the name came from. Uh -huh. we, <laughs> it was actually Biz and I brainstorming it at Obvious, and we were like, well, we've done blogging, and we've done microblogging. What else should we do? And, and I wrote the name medium on the board. I was like, whatever it is, well, let's call it that. <laughs> Well, there is that. I mean, I remember in the early days of blogging, people used to complain. I was writing. I thought, I just didn't know. No one said what it had to be. Um, and I blogged these. I, I was used to writing in sort of, you know, Paul Krugman length New York Times op-ed, like 850 to 1,100 words. So I'd sort of work for a week and then put out my blog. That was it. Yeah. And people were like, no, that's not what a blog, you're not supposed to do that. And I remember, this is when we were walking in Sweden, I said, so is this a problem? I mean, they, they say I'm not supposed to be using it like that. And you said, you can use your blog for whatever the, if you want to use it. You know, it's that's basically my philosophy yeah. for all this stuff. And <laughs> people say, you're tweeting wrong, like, do whatever you want. That's why there's an unfollow button. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's interesting, I mean, Twitter for a long time was, intentionally temporary, right? It, it, what do you mean? You couldn't look at your entire history of tweets sort of by design, <laughs> and now you kind of can. Yeah. It wasn't that by design, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always had them. We, we, always, um, we always wanted to make it easier to look at your entire history. We just... Um, I'm blowing your point, but um, well, yeah, no. I talked to, to you know uh, another another uh, Twitter uh, an early Twitter founder person who was like, "Oh no, that was intentional because you know he said uh, I always uh, uh, I was always upset about how you know the internet encourages us to just do off the cuff quick things and just to think and to share, but then it's stored forever." So he felt like, you know, in the real world, you get to say something wrong, and then it's yeah. kind of gone. But We, when we you do may it, not, uh, not agreed on that point, yeah. but um, whoever this other Twitter person was. But it's, it's much better to, to decide later that, that that thing that you never got around to was a brilliant design decision all along. Uh, but I, we just got better engineering, finally got around to it. Because search, searching the archive is tremendous. I think it's incredibly valuable, and now we're starting to do that more. What else? Well, it's interesting. I mean, that's, you know, for me, the beauty of, of, the beauty and the tragedy of Medium is here's an opportunity to write things that actually take time to put together. Mm -hmm. And the tragedy of it for me is if I'm going to take three, four days to put something together, I want to get paid for it. You know what I mean? I'm going to sell it yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, but I can see there being certain stages of my career where, because there's something, there's something, and I think it's nice, there's something precious about medium. I mean, it's not, it doesn't feel just cruddy. It feels like I'm going to put this up and I want it to look, yeah. it's like as if it's being cast in, in. Yeah, it looks good, hopefully. And it, when I talk to writers about medium, that's, that's a natural reaction. I mean, that's what you do. Most of the world doesn't do that. And we're not trying to, like I said, I'm not trying to replace writers, but I do believe the number of people who have valuable stories or knowledge or ideas in their heads, and they're, they're not going to spend lots of time, but maybe they have it every six months or occasionally in mm -hmm. reaction to the State of the Union, and they, they want to say something, and it's not just for their friends. It's maybe purposely not for their friends at all, and it's longer than a tweet. They're not bloggers. They don't want to become bloggers. They don't want that commitment. They don't want how do you build an audience. That... Those people and for those ideas, they don't. There's not really a place for that to right. go. Right, and it doesn't feel. It's like you put it up as a Facebook update or something. Even one of those long ones, it's like 
As if you just thrown it in the street. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look good. It's not. And it may be, again, your friends isn't the audience. That's specifically what the audience right. of, of Facebook is. So we want to create a place where, hey, here's a context. Here's people at this, you know, you're at an event. It's like, oh, I want to put my stuff about that event and then where other people are putting their stuff about the event and the whole becomes greater than the sum of the parts. So that's where we're starting. I think that's, that's the value that we're trying to start with. And then we want to mix in that um, a place for, for professional writers, but we're not, you're not lacking a platform or platforms right. today. So um, it's less about that right now. I mean, the thing, I, I'm always surprised when I come to TSC because the thing that's on most people's mind is less, how am I going to get my book written or out there, which is a very authorial perspective, but what's going to happen with our industry? You know, what's right. happening with the, you know, is the book going away? Is it being replaced by this ebook? Is it, I mean, obviously you're thinking about the entire publishing ecosystem or you wouldn't be, be doing this. Do you see where sort of the revenue model for a professional writing is going to be going, a professional publishing? Um, I have theories. <laughs> I won't speculate too much on that, but I do think it's going to be good if, to me, there's something, again, what's, what's possible in digital? It's, it's not just, again, making distribution costs lower. It's there's something possible, and I don't know exactly what it is, about making the content richer, making it more dynamic, getting it in people's hands, like the time between when you finish that book and uh, when people actually hold it. And your Should book be is a, a year, right. Yeah, and it's about right now. And so if we can make all that smoother and better and cr increase the surface area of the ideas someone like you is putting up, by that I mean allow more routes to discover them places for them to, to live. So I can, I, if I can't point to some idea in your book very easily and say, hey, check this out and increase your audience um, online because it's trapped in a book. And mm -hmm. so does that mean put it all out there for free? Not necessarily, it depends on your goals, but I, th I think we can embrace these tools to increase efficiency, increase the surface area, maybe change formats and um, improve things over time. I just think so much more is possible than shipping the books in digital or you know, paper form. Well, we got 35 seconds of time to sing. We're supposed to pivot. If oh, right. We're talking about pivoting. Or if, if, if medium doesn't work, how will you pivot? <laughs> Isn't that great? I'll go back to Sweden and the sauna, probably. Yeah, there you go. Well, I'll be there. Right. I'll be there. I'm sticking with the books till the bitter end. No pivot for me, baby. It's just a line drive. It's, it's, I'm almost old enough. To, I think I can make it through to the end without, <laughs> <laughs> without changing. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, All right. thanks for coming thanks to New York. Thanks. Right. Okay,